got game? Do you got game? Uh, I hope you know it's not a game, boy. Yeah. I hope you know real pack handhelds. I hope you know it's not a game, boy. No batteries included, just some assault battery charges. Homie, man, you gotta be cautious. You gotta be nauseous the way that we shake things up. Put eight to your ribs, make you take things up. Careless in the kitchen, the way we break things up. And since y'all coming now, man, let's take things up. I get bucks like a mason trade. Plus, I'm sharp like a razor blade. Excuse me on these cuts. Some of y'all cats confuse me when you tough Cause you turn around and get pussy like you got no nuts I turn around and get pussy like I sign with the bucks I ball like Peyton, while all of y'all hating More money, more problems, that's all in the making You think I'm not here to stay? You sadly mistaken I got, you got game. game You got game, fuck where you come from, fuck your name We all go through pain Look out boxing fans, it's your boy Ashy Knuckles Coming at you once again Um... I want to talk about the fight with Anthony Joshua versus Robert Alanius. Uh, Anthony Joshua looked pretty good. He was originally scheduled to fight Dillian White. That was a fight I was not too um, happy to see. Uh, in my opinion, I believe Dillian White is pretty much shot at this point. Um, the knockout punch by which Tyson Fury got rid of him wasn't even a big punch. Um, so. Of course, you know, as a professional prize fighter, he wants to continue in his career. But in my opinion, the fight was meaningless and it wasn't the type of fight that would bring Dillian, uh, I'm sorry, to bring Anthony Joshua back to title shot contention. So the uh, late substitute was Robert Hellenius. You know, he had just had a fight, I think maybe a few days ago, a few weeks ago, a week or so, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm sorry about yeah about a week ago and the guy he was in the ring with didn't give him a lot of work he got the guy out of there within tw within three rounds so he was in shape and he had not exert himself too much to where he couldn't compete and be a late substitute for Anthony Joshua so when you don't prepare for the guy that you're about to face it's a disadvantage for both and being of the fact that both these guys dimensions are very comparable um, being six foot six, uh, six foot five, 82 inch reach, 79 inch reach around that, uh, around that range. It was like a carbon copy of your opponent in terms of dimensions. And we know Robert Hellenius, you know, uh, he's a big guy, strong guy with a decent punch. And if you sleep on him, he will get you out of there. Robert Hellenius has been credited for stopping the ascent of Adam Kawanowski, who PBC was was pushing towards world title contention. And Kawanowski, you know, being the Polish uh, heavyweight, threw a lot of punches, he was very tough. And um, he was, you know, building an impressive resume to get to the point where he can actually challenge for a title. And that got upset. And since that time, Kawanowski has not been looking like the guy he was being billed as the guy he was being promoted to be the next you know heavyweight superstar the next polish heavyweight title contender since um uh andrew galata who in my opinion had great skills he just mentally did not have the temperament of a professional prize fighter you can break him you can break his spirit and that's why he had five world title shots and didn't win none of them holes you know what i'm saying so the fight itself, you know, Anthony Joshua coming off those losses to um, pound for pound top five champion um, Alexander Usyk, the Ukrainian uh, champion, coming off of those defeats, Anthony Joshua needed a fight that was going to rebuild his confidence before he's able to go after one of these top guys uh, within the division and us online, especially uh, us who rock with the LDBC hard and heavy, we would love to see him fight Anthony Joshua, I'm sorry, uh, Deontay Wilder fight we've been wanting to see this whole time. And I'm not about to beat a dead horse on why it didn't happen and who tried to build, uh, bid themselves out, who thought they were bigger than the others, all that doesn't even matter right now. The time is, uh, is right now. You know, neither one of these guys are at the level they were at when they were first uh, slated to fight one another. But it does not mean it won't make for a nice, exciting heavyweight fight. 
uh, one that will catapult the winner to world title contention once again. Um, but in the fight, you can see the different subtleties that uh, Derrick James has brought to Anthony Joshua. He had his hands up really good. He would throw his shots, bring his hands back. Uh, he wasn't as consistent as I would like to see him do that. But the mere fact that he was doing it shows you that what he's learning within that camp is actually helping him and is going to help his fight game. Early off in the ring, early off in the fight around round two, Joshua, you can see him moving his head. That's not something that he was accustomed to doing. But as the fight prolonged, he was not doing it. So he's starting to get back into his old ways. And, you know, it just happens with time, you know, um, progression, you know, the constant uh, working on these things that weren't in your fight game to begin with. You're going to have to continue to spar using these things and fight using these things before it becomes ingrained within your within your repertoire also he always kept himself within punching range and when robert helanius tried to close the distance you will see anthony joshua sidestep or he'll take a step back always staying out of helanius punching range uh helanius never really got off big power shots but you can see the effect of his jab uh on anthony joshua's face as his nose started to bust up a little bit he had a little mouse under his eye but anthony joshua was never hurt never rocked with a big shot and you can see Anthony Joshua, he was just taking his time, boxing. I mean, this was a heavyweight fight. It's not like we're watching welterweights or featherweights. So it's not going to look like we're watching the little guys. And, you know, Anthony Joshua, he began to get a little bit uh, predictable because he kept throwing the same combination, jab to the body right upstairs. But it proved to be enough for him to win this particular fight as Helenius had no answer for it. He kept getting hit by the same jab to the body and right upstairs until uh, inevitably, inevitably in the seventh round, that same combination would turn, would blow his candle out, and that would be a great victory under Anthony Joshua's ledger. Uh, like I said before, it was a late substitute. The, the fighter knows what they're going to uh, deal with on the night of the fight because they didn't prepare to see each other. It's not an advantage or a disadvantage for either fighter. Both guys were in shape. It's not like uh, Hellenius, they got him out of the, the, the Irish pub and, and put him into, into the square circle with this former champion. He had just fought with a week ago and didn't get much work. He dispatched that guy within three rounds. So the disadvantage for Joshua is that he didn't get to fight the guy he prepared for. But the advantage of, of, of fighting Robert Hellenius he did stamp out a tough, durable, six foot six, big ass heavyweight who can get you out of there if you catch him slipping. The disadvantage for Helene is that he didn't have uh, weeks and months to prepare for Anthony Joshua, same as Anthony Joshua as it pertains to him. But the advantage of Robert Helene is taking this fight is that if he beat Joshua, that's the biggest win of his career, and he immediately becomes a candidate for a world title shot. So, you know, it was a good opportunity for both they put on a nice uh display of boxing i like what i saw like i said i like what i saw out of anthony joshua i saw i like the patience i like the side steps i like the baby steps backwards getting out of punching range i like how he kept his hands up i like how he ducked um robert helena's big right hand anthony joshua continued to operate behind the jab he would jab uh to the head jab to the body sidestep he moved his head a little bit early in the fight when he wasn't getting hit when he stopped moving his head is when he started getting hit but lo and behold the tried and true right hand came through for him as it landed like a fucking oops <laughs> like it landed it landed like a missile it found the target hit the target lay robert helenius out for the count so the fight we would like to see Moving forward for Anthony Joshua, without question, is a showdown with uh, Deontay Wilder. In my opinion, you know how I feel about Wilder. I rock with Wilder hard and heavy. But I think both guys are actually right for the taking. And, you know, you uh, take into the account that it is heavyweight boxing. Everybody's right for the taking as it only takes one. This is the heavyweights. You thump that chin good enough. Anybody who weighs over 200 pounds can put somebody to sleep. And blow their candles out so uh that's the fight we all want to see you know tyson fury he's holding the heavyweight division hostage uh he's fighting exhibitions and whatnot which I, i'm not in uh 
in disagreement with that. You can fight exhibition, do what you want to do. But when you're a world champion, you're holding the division, the division hostage. And the reason why he won't get stripped for it is because um, I forget the uh, UFC heavyweight uh, Ngannou. Um, if he applies for his boxing license, then Tyson Fury is well within his right to have a non-mandatory defense um, and take this particular fight, you know, and without it being held against him or without having to be stripped for it. Um, I don't, I don't have any idea as to who Tyson Fury's mandatory is, but when you read the, um, the organization's rules and regulations, uh, you have a certain amount of time before you have to face your mandatory as a champion. And the other, uh, throughout the duration, I believe it's maybe like two years. I forget. You know, I'm kind of rusty. Uh, within that time frame, you can fight whoever the hell you want. So it is what it is on that note. Uh, like I said, the Anthony Joshua Wilder fight is the biggest non-title event that could be made in the heavyweight division. And it may be one that you can make pay-per-view. Not saying I want to pay, you know what I'm saying? I like to keep money in my pocket, but if it's a pay-per-view event between Joshua and Wilder, I'm, I'm paying for it. I've been wanting to see that fight since forever. So um, Anthony Joshua, I think the story is not um, over for him. I think his story is still being written. I don't believe two back-to-back -back losses against a pound-for-pound -pound caliber fighter marks the end of a good heavyweight in this era. And I don't feel that um, Deontay Wilder losing in his fights with Tyson Fury marks the end of an era for him. It's just one guy he lost to. Same with Josh. was only one guy that he's lost to. Only one guy had these guys' as number, and for whatever reason, those two guys are not fighting each other. And I'm not about to get into who was at fault for the Fury and Usyk fight not happening. Uh, I know Fury doesn't want to fight a smaller guy, a guy who can move, because he said before when he fought um, uh, Steve Cunningham, the mere fact that he was in there with a guy who was naturally more elusive than, than he because he was a naturally smaller guy, it made it harder for him to avoid shots and to land shots. And, you know, at the end of the day, Cunningham put him on his ass. So, I mean, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it's all in his mind. I think, you know, Usyk is a heavyweight now. It's, you know, he's not like Cunningham, who is a, 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 a true blue cruiserweight. I mean, if you look at Usyk's body now, he's filled in within the heavyweight division. He's not as elusive as he used to be. You know, but the boxing skills are there. He's bringing skills from a, being a smaller man to a higher weight division where those guys just don't have the natural abilities abilities as the smaller men, as the way it's always been uh, within the heavyweight division. And uh, I just don't think he's sure sure about that fight, you know, that he thinks he can win. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to throw away, throw out the term scared. You know how I feel about that. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been around a lot of fighters, a lot of coaches. Fighters, are, they're just not afraid of each other. You know, they may be afraid of losing. They may uh, be afraid of uh, surrendering their status by uh, giving a guy an opportunity, a guy who they may not beat. But it's not fear of another man hitting you. You get hit in the gym. It's not fear of another man because he can punch. You got punchers who punch in the gym. You got journeymen that can punch. You got journeymen with real knockout power, but they're nobody in this game because they just don't have the skill level to go with the power. It's, every, it's not rock'em, sock'em robots. The name of the game is not called knockouts. It's boxing. It's the sweet science, the ability to hit without getting hit, and to get yours off without having to endure the other uh, your opponent getting his off or minimizing him as much as you can till you either beat him on the cards or have him looking at the lights. And in this particular fight with Joshua and Hellenius, Joshua did he was what he was supposed to do. He put his shots together. And he started to get a little uh, predictive with the same combination. But it proved to be all he needed to get the job done as he had Robert Hellenius looking at the lights. If I was uh, Coach James and, uh, and Anthony Joshua, when it's time to go back to camp and, you know, look at, you know, some of the things that he did wrong, analyze some of the things that he did right. I would probably look at some old Oscar De La Hoya tapes 
And the reason why I say Oscar De La Hoya as opposed to any other fighters, a lot of fighters that were great, but Oscar De La Hoya threw really crisp sound combinations in his fights. If you ever watch Oscar during the 90s and the 2000s, um, he wasn't a guy who threw the same combination ever. He had probably some of the best combination punching I ever seen because he was he had a very good punch variety when he threw combinations. That's why he was hard to get a read on. You know, Oscar fought all the best guys out. There's only two guys that he didn't fight, and that's Vernon Forrest and Winky Wright. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but when you look at Oscar's fights, he never dialed up the same combination, and he would, that's why he was never predictable. That's why he was always hard to beat, blazing hand speed, good boxing skills, good chin, good movement. He was one of the best that we've seen within that time. I will go and pull up some of Oscar's fights and, you know, check out some of the different combinations that he threw. Um, it's not like he was like Sweet Pea. I don't expect Anthony Joshua to fight like Sweet Pea. Why the hell would anybody have Anthony Joshua look at Pernell Whitaker tapes? You know, you want to go to a, uh, a guy who has some of the similar characteristics, uh, even though Joshua is a substantially bigger man and definitely not as fluid as Oscar, but I could take some of Oscar's combinations and work them into Anthony Joshua's repertoire. I believe that's doable, but maybe that's just my opinion, but that's all I got for you as it pertains to this fight. Anthony Joshua notches a win. Boxing, number one, is skill. It's all about skill, basically. When you start coming to, when you come to real boxing, I'm not talking about no, no not no Augustus Alone shit, that shit they show on TV. That's bullshit. When you start talking about real boxing, Real boxing takes real skill, okay?